743, we're back on WKYC Plus, Case Western Reserve University. This is a big deal. Researchers are bringing sci-fi into reality. Prosthetic hands that don't just move but feel their neuro-controlled sensory prostheses now in a clinical trial are giving patients back the sense of touch. Senior health correspondent Monica Robbins joins us with one of the researchers to share how it's done. Boy, Monica, this is a big deal. Yeah, it really is. Researchers at Case Western Reserve University and the Lewis Stokes uh, Cleveland Department of Veterans Affairs, the Medical Center, they've received $10 million from the U.S. Department of Defense to conduct the largest clinical trial of their revolutionary prosthetic technology. And Dr. Emily Grachik joins me here. This is really important for me to tell people that your group was one of the first in the world to actually uh, examine the effect of of doing this touch technology in prosthesis. So what did you find in, in those studies and how is it impacting what you're doing today? Yeah, so we've been doing this work here in Cleveland for over a decade. We were one of the first groups, as you said, um, so we were studying how we can activate the nervous system to provide the sense of touch to people who have lost a limb. Um, and we've been doing this work and we've learned a lot about how we can communicate with the nervous system in a way that the brain can understand and people can actually feel their hand. Um, they can actually feel sensations from their missing hand even though it's been missing maybe for 40 years. Um, and so we've learned a lot from that study. Um, we also were the first group in the world to uh, do take-home trials of sensory prostheses where people could use it out in their communities and, and doing things around their homes and um, that they wanted to do. And we, thought, we saw a lot of really important benefits in terms of their functional ability to do things um, as well as how they felt about um, their prostheses and about their abilities. So we saw improvements in things like confidence and ability to do social interactions. Um, with the prosthesis. So when people think of that phantom feeling when mm -hmm. someone loses a limb, is, is it sort of the same thing because this thing connects to the nerves? Yeah, so the phantom limbs you might have heard about are an experience that many people with upper limb loss, upper limb amputation experience. Um, phantom limbs can, can be persistent all the time, but what we're doing is providing sensory feedback from the prosthesis directly. So when they touch something with the prosthesis, that triggers a sensor that can then provide information to their nervous system and to their brain that they interpret as, as touching their own hand. How do you do that? Yeah, so, so this is a part of the technology here. Um, these are electrodes that are implanted um, inside the body but around the nerves. And we can activate, um, through these little tiny pieces of metal in here, um, the neurons that are within the nerve. And those, those nerves used to provide touch from the hand. And so even though the hand's not there, the brain still thinks that when it receives a signal um, that it's getting uh, the information from the hand that's lost. Does, does, the, does the candidate, the patient feel that, does it feel the same as it did with their hand or is it just a sensation? How does it work? Many people feel like uh, it feels just like touch that they felt. They can say that feels just like my index finger or my thumb. They can locally localize it. Um, they might feel different types of sensation. They might feel pressures or vibrations. Um, a lot of people describe it as being very informative to their prosthesis use. So many people are looking at this like it's science fiction in a way, but this is so critical. Um, talk to me about the study. Are you still looking for participants to be involved? Yes, this new clinical trial we are recruiting right now. Um, we're looking for up to 12 people. They have to have upper limb loss, so they've, they've lost one or more of their, of their upper limb, so a hand or arm, um, and they have to be willing to uh, participate in our clinical trial, come here to Cleveland and do some of our testing sessions, um, but also use the device in their homes and give us feedback about how they're using it and, and what it helps them do. So they can be from anywhere in the U.S. as long as they can make it here? Yes, they can come here. We will pay for them to come here. We can provide them a small stipend for their participation. Um, so really nationwide we're recruiting. How long would they wear it and do they get to keep it? Yeah, so when they, when they come in, when they get the devices implanted, um, we, we're going to do some testing with them um, in the laboratory. And then they're going to take it home for three months at a time and uh, wear it and use it and, and you know, give us a lot of feedback and, and do surveys. Um, and then they're going to also use their regular standard prosthesis that they had before, and we're going to compare the, the outcomes. Um, in the long term, um, we're hoping to, to be able to provide these to people, but that's not part of the actual study. So th this, these trials, you're already seeing, you know, huge gains from this. Yes. What's the over under, you know, when you see um, if it works, does it, do you see this actually getting to market eventually? We, we are aiming to get this to market, and this, this study is actually a key step 
in that translation plan. So this is what we call a, a pilot clinical trial. So we're, we're gonna do 12 people, see where the impacts are, see how it helps them, um, and, and what aspects it helps them. But really this is setting us up for the next stage, which is a larger, what's called pivotal clinical trial. And that's gonna generate data from, let's say 50 to 75 people. And that's the kind of data that the FDA needs to see to say, yes, this is safe and effective and can be commercialized. So this is really a key part in that pathway. And we're hoping to get that over the next step um, after this study is concluded. But here's the tough question that everybody sitting at home wants to know. How much is it gonna cost and would insurance cover it? Right, so we don't know exactly how much it's going to cost. The overall system, because it includes um, the implanted devices and, and a advanced prosthesis that can do many motions, um, maybe thousands of dollars. Um, but the goal is for insurance to cover this. And actually recently there have been some other uh, people in, in the, or other companies in the space that have had great success in getting this covered by insurance. So we're really optimistic that this is going to be able to be covered so it's very little out of pocket. Quickly, if somebody wants to get involved in the study, what number do they call? Um, the best thing to do would be to contact uh, myself or my study coordinator. Um, the email address is jrw20 at case.edu. All right, and we'll make sure people have access to that if they need it. All right, Dave, back to you. It's almost like Star Wars all over again. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. Wow, yeah. fascinating. Monica, thank you. Sure.